Hi guys, I'm back today with a new video. I know it's been a while, lots happened. So basically, um, I filmed that video last week. Um, I filmed it for four hours in French and in English, but I've bought a new um, microphone, like, you know, these little Thai microphone that you put here. Um, I've bought one because I want it to improve the sound quality for you guys. But <laughs> I've filmed for four hours without realizing that the microphone was just going on and off because whenever I was checking, the green light was still on. So I assumed that it was working fine when it was actually going on and off for four hours. So when I started to edit the video, I basically had to realize that, well, <laughs> this is not happening. Gonna have to do it again. And guys, honestly, this is for you because I really don't like filming. This is the least favorite part of like whenever I'm doing a video. For me, what's more interesting is doing the editing um, and doing the researches out, out of any videos that I'm doing. So really, <laughs> I'm doing it for you. So I really hope that you're going to enjoy that video and I know I haven't filmed anything um, for a while on YouTube as well because for those who've seen the post that I've um, added on the YouTube feed, um, I had an issue with the fan on my laptop um, and there was basically something stuck in there um, so I had to find a nighty guy who could actually repair it so we had to order the new, um, the new piece of IT stuff that needed to change when it arrived, I had it, but then I had lots of personal issue going on this summer that I had to um, have just behind me before I actually wanted to come back on YouTube. So I went on holiday back in France with my family, had a good time. Now that everything is behind me, I'm back and happy to be back on YouTube because whenever I'm here, it's to share good vibes with you. So I don't want to be like, half happy, half sad, and I'm still like trying to pretend that everything is going all right. So I'm back now with a new video. And guys, this is one week before my birthday. So you can wish me happy birthday in advance down on the comment section. But today we are here to talk about a very important artist and one of my favorite artists of Congolese Roomba. Um, and this artist is known by many people. People know him um, for the majority because he's um, undoubtedly associated with um, the mythical band Tout Puissant K Jazz and Franco Luambo Macchiati. But um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because that artist is not only an artist that, that worked with Franco, he's not only an artist that was part of Tout Puissant K Jazz, he did many things um, throughout his career and Tupisson Jazz and Franco were only a part of his musical career. He did many things afterward. He influenced many other artists afterwards. So for me, it was really important to share with you the reason why we owe so much to that man. Because whenever he was doing music, whether it was um, with the guitar, whether he was composing new songs, whether he was writing songs for other artists, he always had the intention to willingly um, share a message through his song. And it is also one of the reasons why he's so well known in the Congolese music scene, because of how much for him sharing a message was something key that he's done throughout his career. And he only passed away five years ago. And until the very end of his life, it's something that he never stopped to share. So I'm really happy and I'm looking forward to share with you the name and the story of Simao Lutumba, c'est parti. Simon Lutumba Ndomanieno was born on the 19th of March 
1938 and he was born in a capital city that was at the time known as Liubani and it is obviously now the capital city of the Republic Democratic of Congo, Kinshasa. And he explains himself that he was a very shy child. He was very timid at the time. And it is through music that he's going to realize that he can actually socialize with people, talk with people in a context where he doesn't have to be very introvert. So it is through music that naturally he's going to start to open up basically to other people. Est-ce que vous étiez timide? On aimerait connaître votre caractère à cette époque. Vous êtes une personne timide, retranchée. Vous étiez comment en grandissant? Oui, un peu timide. Ah d'accord, donc on se trompe pas. <rire> un peu timide. Mais avec euh, la musique, vous allez rencontrer mm -hmm. les amis et vous allez vous adapter avec... Euh... Exactement, parce que c'est quand même un monde assez vivant. Euh, Mais c'est pas qu'on connaît quelque chose à moi, il y Après, je suis passé par là aussi. Mm -hmm. et ça m'a stimulé. D'accord. Et, et voilà. Et from a very young age, he's going to start doing music with his friends. And um, it is because his friends are going to start to tell him He's got lots of talent that he's going to take music a little bit more seriously. But in his mind, at first, he started to do music because first, lots of people around him were doing music, his brother as well. But also because for him, it was a way of expressing expressing sorry himself and um, to make sure that people could understand him a little bit. And see that even if he's a little bit shy, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have anything to share with people. So that's how he started music quite naturally. And um, so after a couple of years, he's going to start to um, to create his very first band with his friend and with the support of his older brother. That band is called Mikra Jazz. And he's going to create that group at the very end of the 50s with his friends. Um, and the fact that this band is called Mikra Jazz is not something that is out of the blue. Um, for those, and I've encouraged you if you haven't done it just yet, but for those who've watched the video that I've done about Joseph Cabasili or the one that I've done about Franco um, or um, Sam Manguana as well, um, you're going to realize that at this time, there was something very unique in terms of music. Many things were moving in terms of music. And at the very end of the 50s, you're going to start to have different music bands that are going to be created. Um, I can think of Tout Puissant Que Jazz. Tout Puissant Que Jazz was created not only by Franco, with other musicians. He's just one of the co-founders of that band. And it was back in 1956. Um, and you also had a mythical group um, that is, for me, one of the, the most important group in terms of music, modern African music, um, African jazz that was also created at this time. And obviously, in 1960, um, it's going to be the independence of Congo. So on the 13th of June 1960, it's going to be the independence. And for those who watched the video that I've done about um, Joseph Cabasile, you would naturally understand that um, the musical context was very much influenced by um, jazz, by Cuban rumba, um, and by obviously African rhythm. But Joseph Cabasile, um is the founder of the band um, African Jazz. And in January 1960, he's going to go to Belgium and he's going to compose a song that's going to become um, a song absolutely um, unique but most importantly, this music is going to embody um, independence for lots of African countries, including Congo. It's going to become the national anthem for um, the independence. That song is called Independence Cha Cha. And with that song, it's just going to um, diffuse a new, a new sound in the air. And obviously, um, it's going to influence the young musician, the young artist, just like um, Sima Lutumba, to 
um, include jazz, include um, Cuban rumba in the rhythm that they're going to start to have in their music. Um, obviously, you had the influence of um, Joseph Cabasele and his band. You also had the influence of um, Wendo Colossai with the song Marie-Louise. And all of that is going to start to influence Simar Lutumba and his band, which is why he decided to call it Mikra Jazz in 1959. <laughs> with the band Mikra Jazz that Simaro Lutumba is going to start to create himself a little bit of a good reputation in the um, Congolese music scene but most importantly in the music scene in Kinshasa where he was with his friend in the neighborhood of Saint Jean and it is why being with more and more musicians that gradually he's going to realize that he is extremely talented especially to play the guitar he's going to realize how much he's got talent as a guitar player and the more he's going to be with musician the more they're going to be telling him how good of a guitar player he is and just like another artist that i've talked about three months ago now because it's been a while since i haven't recorded anything um he's going to realize just like magic system that for him not only he's got talent but for him, it is a God-given talent. He's going to stop to think that music is not only something that's going to help him to be a little bit less shy with other people. It's not only a way to share a message. It is a God-given talent. And as soon as he started to realise that there was this divine aspect of music for him, he's going to officially decide to become a musician and an artist. Euh, je suis né artiste. Mm. Euh, c'est un don, don du Seigneur. Oui. Euh, c'est avec le, le temps que j'ai compris que ça, c'est ma vie. Simaro Lutumba is now in the band Mikra Jazz. And he's not going to stay in that band very long. So only after a year in this band, he's going to join another band. And that band is called Congo Jazz. And again, the reason why this band is called Congo Jazz, like so many other bands were called African Jazz, Tout Puissant OK Jazz, it is again because jazz was overwhelmingly influencing the Congolese music scene at the time. And you started to have so many different um, music bands that decided for fashionable reason at the time to add the word jazz to the music because it was very trendy at the time to add the word jazz in there. So um, Simao Lutumba is going to leave uh, Mikra Jazz because he wanted to open himself up to other opportunities and there was an opportunity to work in the band Congo Jazz. And again, he's going to start to work with more and more musicians, creating his own network and um, at the very end of 1961, there's going to be a new opportunity, an opportunity in a very unique band that's going to transform his life. He actually had the opportunity to stop working as a um, backup guitar player for the band Tupisson Kid Jazz. So he's going to apply to do it and he's going to be successful. So in 1962, he's going to leave Congo Jazz and go to the mythical to puissant OK Jazz. Ma joue konana lo se ba e beti. Ma joue konana boningo pena ni. Ma joue bungi on a katia longende. And why joining the to puissant OK Jazz? Simaro Lutumba is actually at the very beginning not going to be anywhere near being close to Franco because um for those who've watched the video that I've done about Samanguana or the video that I've done about Franco himself, you would know that um, Franco was the leader of the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band and many musicians were either starting their career in the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band and they actually became famous through that band 
or they were already quite famous. Like you think of um, Taboulet Rochereau, he was already really famous. He started with the African Jazz Band in 1960 um, and he actually worked with Franco and the Tupusanke Jazz and did a couple of like amazing tube at the time. But some musicians were either starting the career or they already had an established one and they just wanted to do a successful song with the band. And um, Simaro Lutumba, it was actually his case. He started off his career with Franco, but he had to gradually um, um, climb the ladder, basically, to get a little bit closer to Franco because there were many, many musicians in between. Remember, he just started his career as a backup guitar player. And just like Samanguana or um, Majilu System or Ntesa Dalies or um, Joski Kiamukuta, these artists um, sort of have to, had to um, earn the respect of Franco to get more opportunity in the band. <laughs> And for Simaro Lutumba, what happened is that Franco is going to realize how much Simaro Lutumba has talent in terms of being a guitar player, but not only that, he was also a very good songwriter and a compositor. So he's going to ask him to stop writing songs for the two piece of okay jazz band and he's gonna actually gonna start to become famous and to actually support the reputation of the band because of so many thoughts songs that he's gonna stop writing they're actually gonna become successes and the band owed that a lot to Simaro Lutumba which is the reason why we're gonna dive into the relationship between Franco and Simaro. Simaro and Franco had a very unique relationship um, because you have to know that um, the Tout Puissant Kid Jazz Band was not only a band, it became an actual organization, it became a company, and Franco was the CEO of that organization. And Simaro Lutumba became the vice president, um, so the vice CEO of the um, Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band. And it's not something that arrived out of the blue. Again, many musicians um, arrived in the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band. They performed and they, they helped to build up on the reputation, the excellent reputation of the band at the time. Um, in Congo and in Africa, generally speaking. But from the very early 70s until the very end of what was the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band, Simaro Lutumba was the vice president and he was the one supporting with all the different um, performance. He was the one doing all the repetition with the, the musician. Um, and he ex explains that himself, um, that Franco was the one um, owning everything in terms of um, in terms of visibility, but behind the scene, Simaro Lutumba was there to support the musician to make sure that everything was absolutely spot on. And then um, Franco was just there at the end to say, "Yeah, that's good, thank you." Um, so that's literally how everything happened. Oh, je je ne répète pas beaucoup avec les musiciens. Ce sont eux qui répètent. Ils m'amènent rien que. La cassette pour écouter. Et puis je corrige, c'est tout. 
Les répétitions de l'orchestre sont souvent dirigées par Lutumba, vice-président de l'OK. Is going to compose is called Ma Belle, and when he's going to compose that song in 1974, a song that's going to be interpreted by an amazing musician who is still alive nowadays, it is Sam Manguana. Um, when he's going to do that song, it's going to be a huge success because again, Simaro Lutumba had this talent of being able to share a message, um, spread something very unique through music, through the word. And then um, the artists, the singers that would interpret that song would make those words finally alive in a sense. And it is something very unique that made the reputation of um, Simaro Lutumba. And it is the very first song that's going to be, in a sense, owned by Simaro Lutumba as the artist behind the scene who did that song. And it is with the song Mabele, interpreted by Sam Mangwana, that he's going to receive his nickname, the poet, because of how much he's been using words to share strong messages. <laughs> Elle est passée à mon tonga et dans les liens à l'olango. Au coquet à Kobanza, au tiki moto à Kobela. Oh, pour aïe, au bolibéle qui mettait les mamans. Ma belle, au disoigné. Ma belle. Tumba is obviously known for having writing so many beautiful songs. He's also known for a little bit of controversial songs as well. Um, because for those who've watched the video that I've done about um, Madilu System, you would remember that Franco Luamo Macchiati and Simaro Lutumba ended up in prison in the very beginning of the 70s because they've been writing songs that were considered is um, a little bit too obscene to be shared with the public was a little bit too much of adult songs um, and it happened a few times because it was at a point where Joski Kiambukuta refused to actually sing the song called No. <laughs> he was really worried to get in trouble because he knew um, Franco and Simaro already ended up in prison for writing songs that were just not considered appropriate by um, the public authorities. So that's one of the things that even if he's been obviously known for writing amazing songs, there were a couple of songs that got him and Franco in trouble. But even if that was the case, Um, Simaro Lutumba remains someone really um, respected by Franco because um, you have to know that whenever they were going on tour, everything was managed by Simaro Lutumba and Franco was only there at the very end to say, that's, that's good, there's nothing else to do. Um, but Franco really trusted Simaro Lutumba and Simaro, even if he was behind the scene, he still managed to gradually um, get more visibility, more recognition from different musicians, different artists, because um, you have to know that some of the songs were only written by him. So I'm going to put a couple of extracts so that we can actually share again and not only share, but realize that some of the songs that are now classic of modern African music or songs that were composed and written by Simaro Lutumba and then made famous by the voices of different artists that we still enjoy to listen nowadays but most importantly for me it's a case of 
recognizing how much we owe to Simaru Lutumba in terms of music. And he explains himself that he thinks that he owes to Franco, but he also owes to two great musicians, one from the African jazz band, and he's called uh, Nicolas Cassanda, Dr. Nico, and I plan on doing a video about him because for me, he's one of the most important musicians of Congolese modern music of Congolese rumba, so I plan on doing a video about him. And the other artist is Papa Noel, and we also owe a lot to that musician. He's discreet, but believe me, guys, if you check what he's been doing over the years, you'd be impressed. But again, Simaro explains that he owes to these artists, but I really want to emphasize how much other artists are the voices of Congolese rumba owe to Simaro Lutumba. <laughs> Waya boule, sangolo kola nkake na matoye Epe singa ni boma na zangi ni kambonga na sala Mbongwe loko pamba, eko kiko somba ni wate Ya boule o, lobi na pasi o tali nga oseki Ope kisi nga eko lela e, kasola kaki nga oko bika Zoko ye mato za liko kende, oko singa neko kosa Na ke iko lala yo kati motema Atali lo basuka, jose yo me chante o mama Maya, oh Maya mon amour, yoka mongongo mozali kobele la yona kati ya butu, yoka lokole na suka ya mboka. Kadi matala balungi kukundanga imo besu, nazali na nukope manano na kufike oh. So there is a huge number of songs that we owe both to Franco and to Simaru Lutumba and the Tupisson Ke Jazz Band. And for about 30 years, Simaru Lutumba and Franco Rambo Macchiati are going to be absolute music masters of the Congolese music scene and they're going to become um, those unique references when it comes to live performance, to composition and generally to success in terms of music because the band is going to be that successful for about 30 years. But unfortunately, on the 12th of October 1989, something absolutely drastic is going to happen and it's going to have huge consequences on the career of Simaro Lutuma. <laughs> Unfortunately, after battling for months against um, a disease, Franco is sadly going to pass away on the 12th of October 1989. And um, on that day, it's actually going to be a huge shock for the nation, for Africa, because um, the Tupisoki Jazz Band was still extremely popular when Franco sadly passed away. They were still extremely popular. People were still listening to their music literally every single day. So it's going to be a massive shock for people to lose this huge monument of, um, of African music. And um, another thing that happened at the time, and it was a sad coincidence, but many musicians were outside of the country when um, Franco passed away and um, they've asked to have a visa to be able to attend his funeral, but many of them, including Medjimu System, and he explains that himself on a video, didn't manage to get the visa on time. And the consequence of that is that they couldn't attend his funeral. And the public remained very bitter about this because um, they thought that naturally all the musicians would be there um, to say a final goodbye, basically, to Franco, um, especially because um, Mobutu, who was the president at the time, um, decided to have Foreign National Day um, as a tribute to, um, to Franco for what he's done for the nation. And people expected many of the musicians to be there on the days, but unfortunately, many of them couldn't be there. And um, a few months after Franco passed away, still has the band called Tupisson Ke Jazz and led by um, um, Simaro Lutumba, many musicians are going to gather and they're going to be a live performance in the venue of Palais du Peuple and they're actually going to be um, doing a live performance, 
not only to say a final goodbye to Franco publicly through that music, but also to say that they are grateful for whatever Franco has been doing for them, because the majority of these artists owe what the career was um, to Franco, and Simaro Lutumba himself recognised how much, if he became the artist that he was, he owed that um, a lot to Franco. And they're going to be having this live performance to say final goodbye to Franco, still as the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band. And for a few years, they're still going to be under this group, under this Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band. Um, Simaro Lutumba was the one um, being uh, handling whatever copyright situation they might be having with Franco's family. But unfortunately, um, after a couple of years, there's going to be lots of problem internally um, and problem with um, Franco Lamoumakiali's family, which is the reason why in 1992, the band is actually going to end and it's going to be the end of what we know as the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band. <laughs> So in 1993, there's obviously going to be the very end of what we know as the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band. But there were many musicians that were extremely talented. You still had Simaro Lutumba, obviously here as one of the leader of the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band. Many talents were still in the Congolese music scene. So Simaro decided to not only recreate something new, but he thought there's so many talent out there. Why not just do something different? Turn the page of what the Tout Puissant OK Jazz has been and create something new. And that's exactly what he's going to be doing. So in 1994, he's going to create his own band. And that band is called Bana Oki. And um, just before leaving um, Tout Puissant Oki Jazz and, and not taking part in what Bana Oki is going to be, there's going to be a last um, collaboration between um, Simaro Lutumba and Majilu System. And Majilu is going to compose a song for um, Majilu System that Majilu is going to divinely interpret. This song is, for some of you, you would have guessed, my favorite song, Obinit. <laughs> So from 1993 onwards, Simaro Lutumba is going to start to do many different projects that are going to be very well received by the public. And um, he's going to be composing many different songs. And for me, it's really something very symbolic and extremely strong as well, because Simaro Lutumba is someone that's going to spend more than 30 years within the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band. And the fact that he's going to be composing so many songs afterwards that are still going to be successes, for me, it really shows how much Simaro Lutumba is an exceptional artist and that he is someone that not only managed to um, let his legacy on what the Tout Puissant OK Jazz Band has been, but also managed to do not former Tout Puissant OK Jazz music, music, not only former Franco duo music, but is someone who managed to create his own identity afterwards. And that's something extremely difficult, imagining to have 30 years of successes um, in a band and then creating your own band and still manage to have that many success successes, sorry, um, is making Simaro Lutumba, according to me, one of the most talented artists that we we had. And 
again i'm going to put a couple of songs that are sometimes interpreted and sung by other musicians but composed by Sima Rutumba. and for me it's important that we remember that these songs yes might have been sung by x and x and x artist but again these songs were songs that he composed they were part of his projects and these successes we owe them to Sima Rutumba. <laughs> The impact and the talent of Simaru Lutumba is something that people know around the world and his music is listened nowadays by many but rather you think about his career that he had with Mikra Jazz in the two pisongue jazz band with Franco, afterwards with Banaoke, and all the different successes that he's going to keep on having, um, I really think that Sima Rolutumba is someone that really fed what African modern music is through his talent for being a guitar player, for his talent to write song, to compose music, and even if nowadays some of the songs that he composed are naturally associated with the voices that sing these songs, um, Sima Rolutumba remained a very strong influence for many artists. And there's actually one video where you see Fali Poupa who is actually going and greeting him and thanking him for all the music and the projects that he had over the years that had such a strong impact on him and on so many other musicians because I listen to Fali Poupa all the time, but him, or if you think about Ferigola or Eriti Watanabe, these artists or musicians, singers, that owe a lot to the previous generation of musicians. And again, it's important to remember how young this music is. Rumba, Congolese Rumba, is a young music style. Um, and it is thanks to artists like Sima Rolutumba that we can happily enjoy that music. And another example of the huge legacy that the poet left behind him is that one of his songs has been put on YouTube only a few years ago and it has millions of views. And it is when you read the comment, people from different generations that are listening to these songs. So for me, it's important again to share his name, to share his story, to so that people can actually remember how much we owe to Sima Rolutumba and how much Sima Rolutumba left a huge impact on what Congolese music, on what African music is, but most importantly, how much his talent for composition, for writing songs and for rhythm, naturally, that he had is something that he left behind, but is still vividly present in terms of music that we listen to nowadays. And another thing that he mentions as a dream of his is that when new generation of artists do music nowadays, they actually think of music as something that people can listen from 70 to 75. And when we listen to the music that we have nowadays, we can think that his dream managed to be fulfilled by a different generation of artists. And I'm very pleased to have shared his name and his story with you. And I really hope that you're going to share with many the name of Sima Rolutumba. And I'll see you very soon with the next video. Oh, yeah.
Basusu na bisengo, basusu na mawa, wapi yo mboleo.